Hi, Undow Do here, and I want to do a presentation on the open tokenization framework for Cardano. Specifically, I'm looking for folks who are interested in working on this project um, to reach out to me. And you can do that by joining foundups.org. Uh, that's my Discord, and I'm Undow Do. Here I am standing on the foundation of Fifth Age, 21 million blocks of Bitcoin staring at the Natsukaze, which is the coronavirus and Black Lives Matter movement and the, uh, you know, the end of our election in 2021, January 6th was the conclusion, the attack that I said was coming. I didn't say it was an attack. I said some big event was coming in 2021 at the end of uh, Trump's election. And that was the awakening, right? And struggling to usher in this fifth age. If you know anything about the Mayan calendar, it's a transition between the fourth and fifth age. Um, and that transition period was from 2000, December 2012, all the way through um, 20, end of 2020. Um, and on his forehead, he, here is the blockchain. So you have the foundation of Bitcoin, un unraveling fiat, global currencies and everything else. It's the, it's the, it's the global reserve fund. Um, Dow, Decentralized autonomous organizations or DAOs um, will be come out of any of these blockchains, these fundamental ones here. You can see there's Ethereum, the first one, um, Elixir, uh, which I think is a very important one. Um, here is EOS, and here right by the hand, the one he cares about the most, is Cardano. And this talk is ultimately about, you know, Cardano and this open tokenization framework that I've been talking about a long time. My work, socapism.com, you can read about it, the white paper, it's all about this. So, tokenizing anything, everything, yourself, your YouTube channel, your produce on your farm, your business idea, your artwork. I want you to imagine, for example, if you were... You met a young person, says, I'm going to be the next president, and you had their token, and that person became the next president. What do you think the value of their token? Imagine you met Barack Obama or even Donald Trump before he was Trump. Imagine you met him in, in college, and you're like, you know what? I want to own his token. He's like, I'll, you know, you know Trump would have a token, right? The Trump token. Um, if you have a YouTube channel, you have one or building one, let's say you're the Moon Carl or someone else, and you want to give away swag for your token, you know, and it'd be simple, done. Produce, pro, produce on your farm, make eggs, and other really interesting things happen here because I create this egg token, all of a sudden I have a competitor, and I say, hey, I'm going to give you my egg token. Every time you sell, you can get these egg tokens. I'm going to make you a co-creator uh, because ultimately when he sells, he's it, we're building the network. It's like building the hash power, right? If I have every egg producer and I hustle and I go out there and get every egg producer uh, to have it or I come up with the YouTube you know, creator token, right? And I go out and get all the YouTube creators and say, I'm going to give them out to you. I'll make you co-creator and you can give them out, right? We're all together on this. We're all winning on this. And uh, you could do that. Um, or let's say you have some artwork and, you know, no one wants your art and all of a sudden your token has value. Your, your, you know, the token's tied to your artwork. There's so many different things. These are just some of the possibilities when you tokenize everything. And all these tokens, right? Um, whoop, I didn't want to go. What happened here? Okay. All these tokens um, have these these characteristics, and these characteristics are they last ten years. Uh, things end. Things aren't eternal, right? Having a token that never ends is kind of stupid in my view. Everyone thing dies. If you don't, if you know, ten years is is a long enough period for someone who's eighteen, twenty eight, or whatever you know, to to formalize your life, your artwork, your business, everything else. Ten years is what it took for Bitcoin. To, to get to that zero to 10,000 value, I'd say you, I have level from level seven to level one token, right? Um, no one owns them. They mimic Bitcoin. So you, just because when the token's created, all of a sudden you don't have all these tokens that you distribute, they work just like Bitcoin. They mimic Bitcoin. Uh, distribution that uses the golden rule, the 80-20 golden distribution rule, 80% goes to the customer collaborator creator, uh, and 20% goes to the network and AI um, manages the Bitcoin Global Reserve Fund. This is very important because 
you know, one of the questions that people says is, well, Bitcoin is no longer for the masses, it's not for the people. Well, this explains how Bitcoin will be because imagine there are literally millions of tokens being created and, you know, Satoshis every day by the millions are being, you know, brought into this Bitcoin Global Reserve Fund, which is used as a fund to create stable coins out of all these tokens. There is no pump and dump with these tokens because the AI is managing and driving and setting the valuation. Now, obviously, people could take the tokens and, and bypass this and stick them on an exchange. Sure, right? But um, it would be hard for them to pump because, you know, um, you know, you could take your token. I mean, there, I don't know. It doesn't exist yet. So there may be some gamification that can happen there. But in the long term, it really doesn't matter, right? If people take tokens and pump and dump and drop and whatever. But for the most part, the value is and the tokens can always be swapped or shared within the network, within the within the application that exists. Um, and this 20% uh, which goes the network, the network actually is, is an airdrop and the AI, right, manages the, in the Bitcoin Global Reserve Fund. So the 20% is very important in that. So everyone in the network is getting this airdrop, this 20% airdrop, okay, be very clear. Eight, and then of that, that's 80% of that 20%, and then 20% of that 80, you know, makes the 100, is always going to this Bitcoin Global Reserve Fund. So if you have a token and you are participating, and based on your participation level, you're always going to participate in the airdrop. So if you are an active user versus a passive user, your airdrop is going to be greater or smaller. Same thing as customers, collaborators, there is actually the AI is determining your participation because participation in this framework is mining, right? How you act to better the world, how you act to make things better, right? And the AI is doing proof of value or proof of benefit proof of benefit this is the you know um, in determining the valuation on that and all this is open code will be hushed out there's no there's you know there's no uh, there's no uh, you know uh, black box so to speak it's all open and then we'll be able to see the code how it runs and everything else um, and that's important right transparency on there so the proof concept that we're what we're building is this web app not on the blockchain initially just a web app and we want everyone to come in and type build this web app get your ideas what you think it looks like and this is what it does right creates a token swap a token share a token that's it and to kind of zoom in on this here just to kind of example you create a token on there the default screen is going to be something like uh, coin market cap where all the tokens are listed there so as you create the token it will be listed there um, all you do there's one thing the user does he creates the name and the details what it is what it's about right and then he then he basically sets the drip and he sets the drip um and uh the default is bitcoin if you don't know what to set the drip for just go default it's going to say it's going to treat it like bitcoin which is 50 every five minutes and then the halving um and there's an advanced feature where you can where you can change the halving right so you can have it happen instead of every five minutes every minute and stuff like that and the having and all, that would be advanced functions but the set the the, the default functions this it models bitcoin um, then there is the noodle calculates the cost of the token says hey you got to pay this gas fee how are you going to pay it ethereum whatever blah 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 and it creates token it's that simple okay so um, uh, some of the challenges that we're facing is the smart DAO understand that in essence what you're creating is a DAO a centralized autonomous organization it's just a token of a DAO but ultimately as this token grows it becomes a DAO uh, it has an organization has participation has a network people determine you know there, there's potential um, you know um, uh, things that will derive out of this but ultimately it, this smart DAO initially is this the AI running the token but that token fund and everything in many respects is a DAO decentralized autonomous organization so it's self-managing it does the token allocations like it figures out you know the distribution what the worth everything else it sends it out it's constantly looking for for hackers vulnerability it's making determinations you know um, looking for for example they determined sumo wrestling was being fixed based on the data so it's always looking at the data saying hey is this is being fixed is there you know is there's multiple addresses are they all going the same thing is someone gaming this the, the, it's a smart DAO, right it's it's uh, it, it's it's somewhat intelligent looking for uh, people taking abuse of uh, taking advantage of the system. It's a distributive AI in the sense that it doesn't exist on 
you know, on 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 servers here, it just on every app. There's a small part of it that's doing this, and it's building its computational power and everything else by the distribution of the app. So, how do we do that? Okay, how is that done? And ultimately, it's determining the valuation, the ranking of these tokens, um, and it's always doing that, you know, all the time. So, you know, the network is the allocation of the tokens in real time. Um, there's a lot of bandwidth there you know is it constantly most likely the app itself is doing the calculations and then it's going then it's saying this is what we think it is it's sending and then it's creating this handshake with with the noodle right which is the ai um it's calculating real time pools right so it knows specifically what these it's doing this for a million there's a lot of you know there's a lot of potential um uh stress network and how it handles that and where is how is that going to be you know uh, taken care of. Uh, that this is something for some very, you know, genius engineers to figure out. In the KYC um, validations, is it a real person? Is it a bot? Is it a hacker? All that stuff. Making sure that uh, people are playing, you know, fair on it. Uh, that's it. There's a lot more to this, and um, I have a document that you can, you know, look at. It's right here. Play Foundups 2021, right? Bitly. Play found up 2021. You could read the design document that I've put together on that there. Uh, in essence, what you're doing is create, swap, or share a token. That's it. Um, and um, let's go the right way here. Um, it's very straightforward. There's also, I have a very detailed documentation on this here. This is actually very simplistic. I didn't want to overdo it with folks, but it's it makes a lot of sense on there. Understand, I've been working on this for years. Been waiting for technology to evolve, right, to where we need to be. Um, and the idea that you can tokenize everything leads us to this here, to the foundation of the fifth age, where Bitcoin is going to unravel fiat blockchains, right? And this framework will be on any blockchain. So there will be API. You can do Ethereum, Elixir, EOS, you name it. All these tokens, all this framework, it's ubiquitous. It doesn't have to be just on Cardano. I think Cardano is a great one to launch on. And then once it's launched on Cardano, right, it can, it can, be, it can be forked onto any other blockchain. And people who are using it should be able to say, hey, I want this to be on Ethereum. I want this to be on Elixir. I want this to be on EOS. I want this to be, you know, and so on. Um, this is the framework, and here is that noodle managing it all, right? Here's the noodle, smart noodle, smart DAO, right? Open beneficial AI, staring out of this, and there it's wrapping around. And there's literally infinite number of blockchains out there, and it's in the in the network's very important because one of the big challenges is right now there is this um, um, Bitcoin is is being held by the wealthy, right? They're buying up. You know these these whales and the normal person kind of missed out right so but in this framework remember that 20 percent is always going into here so you know one of the challenges i is how do i move bitcoin from here to there you know how do i move it from here to here so that's been one of the things that i've been trying to work out and i figured it out i figured it out on 0202 2020 0202 2020 undoubted dude will be greeted by the noodle right and I have a blue glove video that you can, you know, watch on that. So uh, if you want to learn more, if you want to be part of this, um, you know, I'm just looking for folks to build it. I'm not looking for any any funds. This is Creative Commons. Non, um, you know, I'm putting this in the Creative Commons as the other documents on there. I should probably put the disclaimer on there. Be the next Bitcoin. Trademark of mine, right? Be the next Bitcoin, right? Ultimately, why not? Bitcoin did it. Why couldn't another Bitcoin, another token modeled after Bitcoin do the same thing? Um, the only difference is, is you'll be, you know, it's 10 years. So if you get to 10,000, that's an amazing, you know, you have a, a million, 100,000 tokens, 1,000 tokens, whatever, and they're worth 10,000 each, right? Yeah, it's, you know, everyone doesn't need to be billionaires. Billionaires is kind of gluttony in my view. So uh, I appreciate you watching this. Charles, I'd love for you to, you know, to... Uh, um, you know, step up, and I know you've talked about tokenizing everything. I know we're on the same page, so do Charles. And I'd love to uh, work with your teams, or if you have a team or other teams that want to, 
incorporate this and work with this, I'm here to help you. Take care.